In today's video, I'm going to be explaining what Segwit is in Bitcoin. First, let's talk about transacting with Bitcoin and how that process works. A Bitcoin transaction is a transfer of Bitcoin from one address to another. Each transaction has a digital signature and transaction data. Bitcoin.com describes a Bitcoin transaction this way. Bitcoin transactions are messages like email, which are digitally signed using cryptography and sent to the entire Bitcoin network for verification. Transaction information is public and can be found on the digital ledger known as the blockchain. The history of each and every Bitcoin transaction leads back to the point where the Bitcoins were first produced or mined. As a beginner, you should know what Segwa is because you don't want to get confused and anxious when you see this option when transacting with Bitcoin. If you've ever used a hardware wallet like a Ledger Nano S, then you may have noticed that there's an option to send your Bitcoin to a SegWit address or a legacy address. But what exactly is SegWit and what's the difference between it and legacy? SegWit is short for segregated witness. Legacy is the original Bitcoin protocol that's been around since 2009. The original protocol bundled the transaction data and the digital signature into one group. The problem with this is that it resulted in a lot of wasted space because oftentimes the data wouldn't change but the signature would. With SegWit, the data and the signature are segregated or separated into two different groups. SegWit was a soft fork that was activated in August of 2017. A soft fork is a change to the Bitcoin protocol that is backwards compatible. This means that SegWit is not a new cryptocurrency or a new blockchain, but rather a change to the existing Bitcoin protocol. This was due to the block size wars, where some people want to increase the block size from 1 MB to 8 MB to scale Bitcoin. The block size wars happened because the Bitcoin network was getting congested and transaction fees were rising. There were two camps, those who wanted to increase the block size, SegWit 2x, and those who wanted to keep the block size at 1 MB, but make the protocol more efficient, segregated witness. Those that didn't want to increase the block size felt that it would centralize the power with the miners who could afford to run the larger blocks. So, SegWit was a compromise between the two camps. It essentially means that certain data is no longer stored in the block header, but is instead segregated or stored separately. A block header is like a summary of the block, and it contains important information like the hash of the previous block, the timestamp, and the nonce. The timestamp is the time that the block was mined, and a nonce is a number that's used to find the correct hash. The hash is what secures the block, and it's unique to each block. SegWit stores this data not in the header, but off to the side in what's called an extended block. This extended block is not part of the main blockchain, but it's still verified by the miners. So, by removing certain data from the block header, SegWit makes the protocol more efficient and allows for more transactions to be stored in each block. This means that the block size can be increased without increasing the actual size of the header. As a result, SegWit addresses are smaller than legacy addresses, which means that more transactions can fit into a single block. This leads to faster transaction times and lower fees. It's also worth noting that SegWit is not just a block size increase. It also comes with a host of other improvements, such as malleability fixes, which makes it much harder for attackers to change transaction IDs, and this benefits both users and businesses who rely on Bitcoin for payments. Overall, SegWit is a significant upgrade to the Bitcoin protocol that offers numerous benefits. However, the original can still be used and was named Legacy after SegWit's activation. It's important to note the significance of this resolution. As a soft fork, a new blockchain for Bitcoin did not need to be created. This is unlike the hard fork that happened in August of 2017, which resulted in the creation of Bitcoin Cash. A hard fork is a change to the protocol that is not backwards compatible. This means that a new blockchain needs to be created for the changes to be implemented. For example, when SegWit was activated, a new blockchain wasn't created. Instead, the existing Bitcoin blockchain was simply updated to include SegWit. This is important because it means that there is only one Bitcoin blockchain and one cryptocurrency. A peaceful soft fork ensures that there's no division in the community and that everyone can still use the same Bitcoin blockchain. If this resolution did not happen this way, Bitcoin would likely have died out a long time ago. This is because a hard fork would have split the community in two. 
with each group using a different Bitcoin blockchain. This would have been confusing for users and businesses and would have ultimately led to one of the blockchains being abandoned. So SegWit was a vital step in ensuring that Bitcoin could continue to grow and scale. It's an important part of Bitcoin's history and development. For some, it can be confusing to see two different types of Bitcoin addresses. But ultimately, SegWit was a necessary upgrade that has made Bitcoin stronger and more resilient than ever before. Another key difference between Legacy and SegWit is the address formatting. SegWit has two address formats while Legacy only has one. Legacy addresses start with the number one. If you have an address that starts with BC1, you can be sure that it's a native SegWit address. Nested SegWit addresses start with a 3. All three addresses can be used to send and receive Bitcoin to each other, so you don't need to worry about which format you use. Just be sure you use the right public and private address that's associated with your wallet. The main purpose of SegWit is to fix the problem with the way transactions are stored on the blockchain. The main purpose of SegWit is to fix the problem with the way transactions are stored on the blockchain. To understand SegWit, we first need to understand what a Bitcoin transaction looks like. Normally, when you make a transaction, your wallet will create a transaction object. This object contains three things, your inputs, outputs, and a digital signature. The inputs are the addresses that you're sending the Bitcoins from. The outputs are the addresses to which you're sending the Bitcoins. And the digital signature is used to prove that you own the Bitcoins that you're sending. The problem is that the digital signature takes up a lot of space. This means that the blockchain is getting bigger and bigger and is taking longer and longer to process transactions. SegWit fixed this problem by separating the digital signature from the transaction object. Now, the digital signature is stored in a separate data structure called the witness. This means that the transaction object is smaller and can be processed much faster. It also means that the blockchain doesn't have to store as much data, so it can be smaller too. SegWit is a great solution to the problem of slow transaction times in big blockchains. As you probably know, Bitcoin is currently facing some scalability issues. The SegWit solution is a way to increase the block size limit on the Bitcoin blockchain by removing certain data from each transaction. This would allow more transactions to fit into each block and therefore help to improve Bitcoin scalability. The SegWit solution is not without controversy though and there are still some unresolved issues that need to be worked out before it can be fully implemented. For example, some people are concerned that SegWit could lead to the centralization of the Bitcoin network because it would give more people power to miners who can implement it. However, others believe that SegWit is a positive step for Bitcoin and that it has the potential to help solve some of the scalability issues that the network is currently facing. Only time will tell how SegWit will ultimately affect Bitcoin, but it is definitely a topic that you should be aware of if you're interested in the future of this digital currency. Make sure to share this video with your friends and family if you found it helpful. I hope this video helped you learn more about SegWit and why it's important for Bitcoin. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Also, don't forget to check out our other Bitcoin videos for more information on this revolutionary digital currency.